I spent a ridiculous amount of time building this abandoned farmhouse, meticulously placing all this trash and the landscaping and cracks in the wall. There's clutter everywhere. And now I'm gonna go in and delete all of it because I wanna try to restore this house back to what it would have been before it was abandoned. This is becoming a bit of a series here on my channel. So if you wanna watch the first video where I built the original house, I'm gonna link it down below. And today in this video, we're going to restore this house. But I think that restore is almost the wrong word. Restore kind of implies that I'm in the modern day fixing an old thing, but what I actually want to do is pretend in the timeline that we're rewinding to before it got ruined. So it's not restored, it's it's rewinded. We're, we're turning back the clock. I don't know. Before I go in and delete everything, I want to quickly show you around the build so that you can see what we're working with. So kind of in my mind, this house used to be lived in by a family that was working on the farm. They had some old farm areas. They had a barn with a horse in it. They had a wine cellar in the basement of that barn. Um, this is the previous owner. <laughs> in the house, you can see the remnants of an old entryway. They had this beautiful kitchen, only one bathroom downstairs. There's a living room here. We have a little office. There's a hallway that takes you to the dining room. In my head, some ghosts have taken over and they had a bit of a dinner party. So they've got some ghostly drinks. <laughs> Upstairs, there's four bedrooms. We have the primary bedroom. There's a nursery, a kid's room that is full of poop and boxes. And then maybe like a teen's room over here. The porch is like completely destroyed. Things are overgrown. All the windows are cracked. But you can kind of see the remnants of what it would have been. So for example, there's old fences that are broken down over here. We've got this rusty old tractor. They obviously had a little bit of a garden on their porch over here. So what I want to do is take this abandoned version and try to imagine what it would have looked like. So we can keep some things like these stripy wallpapers, but just maybe in a swatch that's less ruined. We'll keep all the rooms in the same place. We'll just fix them back up to how it would have been. I'd even like to keep some color schemes. I really love this wallpaper with the pretty florals in this bedroom. So I want to try to take this and imagine what this bed would have looked like if it were not broken. And then, you know, also remove some things like this body outline and uh, Grim Reaper gnome. So with that being said, we have a lot of work to do on this build and I'm just going to jump right into it. And unfortunately, the first step is to go through and remove all of the things that I placed. All of this clutter and decor that I spent hours trying to place, we have to go through and just delete all of it. Which honestly can be kind of satisfying to watch when it's sped up like this. I don't really want to admit that, but it's true. It's kind of cool to watch it all slowly go away and clean up everything. Now I did keep some things. So obviously like the shutters are still there, the layout is still there, and there's a few furniture pieces that I kept as well. Like the kitchen cabinets are all still there. A lot of the bedroom furniture I tried to keep the same because again, in my head, this furniture was here before. It's just kind of ruined and broken now. There's a lot of pretending that goes into making a video or a build like this because we have to pretend that like, for example, I have those kind of broken dining room chairs. So I put in this version different dining room chairs that look similar but are not broken. So it's not like an exact match from before. It's it's uh, a lot of imagination happening <laughs> because we have to imagine in this like storyline timeline what it would have been like. This has genuinely been so fun for me to do, by the way. I've really really, really loved thinking about the story and the kind of sims that would have been here. And I'm sorry to tell you, or maybe excited to tell you, depending on how you feel about it, I'm gonna make a third video about this where I renovate the house for real. Which is confusing because this is kind of renovating the house also, but like I said, we're not renovating, we're not restoring, we're rewinding, okay? This video is us rewinding. <laughs> and then in the next video, I'm kind of picturing the next one is like from the modern day perspective where a new family has come here and bought the house and they're renovating it to their more modern tastes. Whereas this version is the original family in the old days. I don't know what the old days are. I don't I don't know what time this is set in or anything like that. It's uh it's all imaginary. <laughs> but this is the old days. Now I did do a couple strange things that you're gonna have to forgive me for. So for example, the original house had vertical siding, and then on this version I put horizontal siding. I don't know how in the process of the house being abandoned the siding changed direction, but it did. What I was kind of picturing is that like the floors were the same, but they just in the abandoned version were in a worse swatch. And then in this version, the original, the old version, whatever you want to call it, it's very confusing because the original is the abandoned version.
version. That's what I built first. But like before the house was abandoned, it would have had nice wood floors that then got kind of distressed over the years. In the same way, the paneling would have been this beautiful white siding that got kind of distressed. The paint was peeling over the years. And then again, same thing on the roof. I use this kind of like light gray metal roof texture because in the abandoned version, it was a light gray metal roof with holes in it. I want to have it when you look side by side, it looks like the same house still, just one is new and one is old. I feel like I'm describing this in such a confusing way because this is the new house, but it's also the old house. <laughs> because this is like the old version from the old days. But anyway, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm confusing myself even. And to make matters worse with this old, new, confusing business, I kind of tried to decorate the house as though it was a little bit old. So like, even though this is the original house that like wouldn't be old and destroyed yet, I still picture in the story, this family has been living here for a long time. Like maybe their grandma grew up here. So we still have some furniture from like back in the day that's still in the house. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, this house was old before it ever even got abandoned and destroyed, which really, really messes with the timeline. This old new, it's all very confusing, but does that make sense? We've kind of finally finished clearing everything out and repainting and repairing some stuff now. So we're actually starting to furnish the interior. Now I did take some liberties here <laughs> with what I was doing because obviously the tile that I'm switching it to looks nothing like the destroyed tile that I used, but that's okay. We can pretend that like the linoleum peeled up or something and there was gross stuff underneath. How about that? We, we just have to use our imagination a little bit. That's kind of the theme of this video. It is all pretend and we must use our imaginations for it to work. I really enjoyed doing this because back in the day, like literally years ago on my YouTube channel, I used to have this series called Fixer Upper, which some of you might remember. Unfortunately, probably not most of you because my channel has grown a lot since then. But basically I had this series where my subscribers would build houses kind of like the farmhouse we started with. So they were abandoned, there were cracks everywhere, there old, they're broken. They'd put them on the gallery with like a storyline. So it'd be like, oh, you know, this young family has a baby on the way and two kids already. And they just bought this house, but it's too small. They've got a budget of 30,000 simoleons. And then I would try to download the house and fix it to fit the family storyline. And then also kind of like update the house to fix all the broken parts and stuff. And this is like my favorite thing. This stems from my childhood obsession with HGTV because I used to watch that channel constantly. <laughs> I was like a Chip and Joanna game stan, but I kind of stopped doing that series on YouTube. I don't really have a reason. I just kind of like started posting other videos more often and then I sl it like slowly fizzled out, I guess. But this has been really nice because it's kind of like the re-emergence of Fixer Upper. But in this case, I'm the one who built the house, which I didn't usually do. I didn't normally build Fixer Upper houses myself. I mostly just fixed them. I, I very rarely made like the gross versions of them. Oh my God. Also, I should probably do a few little disclaimers quickly about some real life stuff. First of all, if the lighting looks weird and it's like dark in here in my room. It's actually 10 a.m. It just doesn't look like it because I have to have my ceiling light off. In true fixer upper fashion, my ceiling light has been flickering today. I think that the bulb is dying or something, but I just, I can't reach it to change it. So I need to get a tall person to help me. For now, I just have it off. So I do have lights in front of me, but I feel like I look kind of glowy and the background's kind of dark. So anyway, if it's weird, I'm sorry. It's better than flickering and I, I need to grow or something because I can't reach it. Oh my goodness. And the other life update also kind of related to lights flickering is that there's a hurricane coming to Florida. As of recording this, it's still a tropical storm, but they expect it to strengthen into potentially a category three hurricane. By the time you see this video, that is like super outdated information. I'm just speaking from, from what's happening right now on Monday morning. It's also right now looking like it's not gonna be coming towards central Florida. So things should be okay where I am in Orlando. We're also usually generally safe from hurricanes for the most part here because we're in central Florida. Last year, we had some rough flooding problems, thankfully not in my house, but you just never know with storms like this. Like it can change direction, it can strengthen rapidly. Like you really just don't know what's gonna happen until it actually hits. So saying that, I don't know what's gonna happen. We may lose power for a while, may not. It's just, it's really up in the air. Last year, I moved here into this house right before the first major hurricane of the season and my old house lost power for a week, but this house did not. They're not that far away from each other. It's just, you know, things happen. Like maybe a tornado knocks on a power line, stuff like that can go on. I'm telling 
telling you this because I just want to warn you that like if all of a sudden I'm not uploading for three days, I'm going to try to pre-record so that doesn't happen. But again, it's out of my control completely. So like we may lose internet, may lose power, that sort of stuff could go on. Me and my family should be safe, which is all that matters. And obviously any of you on the coast or like more directly in the path, I am keeping you in my thoughts. Hurricanes are scary. I, I think I'm more scared this time this year than I was last year because first of all, we lost two trees last year and one of them almost fell on my house. So that kind of scared me a little bit. And also I have all these cats right now. I have my cat, Snap, who I've had for 15 years, but I'm also watching these cats that I found in the sewer. I made a video on that. I can link it down below for you. So I have five cats in my house, three babies, my cat and the baby's mom. And I'm quite anxious about the thought of like a tornado or like bad, bad storm situation things happening and me having to go and hide somehow with like all of these cats in my closet. I don't know. Um, so that part makes me a little bit nervous. Again, I think things are going to be okay. It's just important to be prepared for the worst case scenario. So I, I am and I'm nervous about it. Anyway, life updates out of the way. We're finishing up the living room now and then moving into the dining room. I gotta say, the living room was rough <laughs> because I was so unsure of what rug to use. I always struggle with things like this where there's a quite heavily patterned wallpaper. I have a real hard time with the rug situation matching it. It's not as bad in the dining room because I think that the paneled stripes are easier to fit other patterns with. But when you have like a floral pattern with a floral rug, I think it's sometimes too much. So I was just having our time. The dining room though, I think is one of my favorite rooms in the house. I use this beautiful growing together rug that has these cute little pink roses on it. I just thought it was really pretty in there. I was kind of channeling like grandma's house dining room. Again, I don't really know where in time I'm picturing this version of the house to be because I didn't set out to like build a house in 1920 and like try to make it historically accurate. I just tried to set out to build an old house, <laughs> but this could very easily pass as like a modern day old house that people still live in. There isn't like old appliances and a lack of technology basically is what I'm trying to say. Oh no, I also just realized that the broken down house had a litter box. I don't think I put anything for a cat in this version of the house. I think I, uh, I think that was an oversight. <laughs> I think I failed to add in the cat things. Oh no, I feel bad. That does not match with the storyline. If the story is that the original owners had a cat and then they abandoned the house and that's why the litter box is there, then why is there no cat in this version? Okay, okay, okay. Timeline adjustment. This version of the house is before they adopted the cat, but then they adopted a cat and then they all died and abandoned the house. <laughs> and that's why there's an abandoned litter box. This is just pre-cat. Pre-cat, pre-disaster farmhouse is what this is. Oh my God. I have to stop talking about this timeline. It's getting confusing. I just, I can picture you all being like, what are you saying? <laughs> stop talking about it. So I'll stop, I'll stop bringing it up. I'm sorry. While we're here, I usually use these speed builds kind of as like a podcast life update sort of thing. And speaking of cats, again, I know, I'm sorry. I only talk about cats. If you've been to my Twitch streams recently, literally all I talk about is cats. I sit there for three hours only talking about cats. I've been really struggling with like social media recently because I I feel like I need to post more, but the only things on my brain are cats. Like I go to post on Twitter or something because I'm like, oh, I haven't posted in a while. I probably should post something. And I cannot think of a single word to say that isn't cat related. Like these cats have consumed my life. So anyway, I'm going to do it again here for a second. <laughs> Speaking of the hurricane also, the kittens are supposed to have an appointment at the vet on Wednesday morning to get more shots. But Wednesday morning is when the hurricane is supposed to make landfall. So I think that I'm going to have to call and reschedule their appointment today because first of all, even if it's not bad here and like the vet is open and things are fine, I, I don't know if I am emotionally prepared to drive to the vet with a pile of cats in a hurricane. Like I just, even if it's fine and it's not storming that bad, I like the anxiety of all of that is it's not, I can't, <laughs> it's too much for me. So um, I think I need to reschedule their appointment, which is great. I have to call them today anyway to schedule their mom's spay appointment. In case you guys missed it, quick recap. I found these three kittens in a sewer. <laughs> well, they were in a storm drain, but I, you know, I call it a sewer because it's more fun. I found these three kittens in a sewer about, I don't know, five weeks ago. So I've been taking care of them. I found their mom also. I've got them all in my house. <laughs> so I've been like raising all these children recently and the vets wanted to wait until their mom was done nursing and had been for a couple weeks before we spayed her. So now it's time. <laughs> she got her blood work done. 
we can schedule her appointment. So we're gonna do that soon, very exciting. And then after she's spayed and healed from her surgery and stuff, she's gonna go live with my family. She's a stray from my parents' neighborhood and they were feeding her for a couple months before all of this happened and we found the babies. So my whole family has grown quite attached to her. We even named her Frankie before all of this happened and we found the babies. So looking back, it actually makes a lot of sense that she suddenly started coming around because she would have been pregnant. We just didn't know because we didn't get that close to her or anything. I mean, I didn't even know she was a girl at the time. So it's all uh, very interesting. <laughs> but now obviously very glad that she was coming by because we were feeding her and then we found her babies. But yes, now it is finally time for her to get spayed and then she can go live with my parents because they were thinking about taking her in before all of this. So um, she gets to go home. I am gonna keep two of the babies and my parents are also gonna take one of the other babies. So anyway, they've all got homes. <laughs> They're staying in the family, but it's all very exciting. And um, it's, it's almost time for my children to leave the nest. Well, half of them. I was kind of thinking that it would be best to keep Frankie until after her spay, just because I felt like it would be easier for her physically and emotionally to deal with all of that without having to also move at the same time. <laughs> so that was kind of my thought process. I'm just trying to make the adjustment as easy as possible for her because obviously she's a stray, so I don't really know what her life experiences are and things like that. I think that she probably used to be around people to some degree. I don't know if she belonged to someone and got like left outside. We did start seeing her right around the same time that the UCF classes got out over the summer. So I wouldn't be surprised if maybe she belonged to a student and got left behind because horrifyingly, a lot of people get pets and then move and then leave their pets where they used to live. So if that's the case, like she maybe has experience with people. So I just, I, I don't know. I wanna make sure she's as comfortable as possible to make this transition as easy as possible for her because she was living outside for a long time. So like, we're I don't know. Anyway, you get it. I'm sorry. Like I said, all I think about is cats. <laughs> I did make a whole video on it, so I'll link that again down below for you. Well, we are furnishing the bedrooms now. I've actually furnished all of the bedrooms pretty much in the time that I was talking about cats, but you can see kind of some remnants of what the abandoned rooms looked like. You can see some of that in here. That's what I was doing on purpose. So for example, the kids room with the single bed, it had that green bed. I used the same bed in there, but just like furnished around it in a way that, you know, looked more like it would have before it was abandoned and full of poop. The main house is pretty much done now though. I'm gonna go back into it and show you a tour once I finish the whole build. Cause for now we're moving out to the barn and I am really excited about the barn in here. So in the abandoned version, I had a barn. It was just full of trash and like overgrown. So there was plants growing inside and stuff. And in this version, I want it to be a more functional barn. So I'm decorating it as if a horse actually lives in here. This was fun for me because I first built the barn obviously for the other house that was broken. And I had like holes in the floor. I had a basement down below and I cut out out pieces of the floor so you could see down into the basement. So it's kind of cute for me to imagine this like ridiculous detailed hole in the floor basement in how it would have been before all that happened. I gotta say, I almost like the holes in the floor better. It's a real nice, you know, open air feeling. <laughs> it's at least better from the basement perspective to have holes on the ceiling because you can see some natural light. But anyway, like I said, I decorated this to have a horse inside of it. There's also just a bunch of storage. And then downstairs in that basement, it's still a wine cellar. There's like nectar stuff down there so you can make and store nectar in the basement. This is the curse of a new pack because a new pack comes out and immediately I want to use all the things from it in every single build. Like I never have basements in normal houses. Now we have horse ranch, basements everywhere. Nectar cellars everywhere. <laughs> I just keep putting them all over the place. I do think that in this particular case, it's kind of fun. And I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler about the second version, the second renovation, the modern one, if you will. I wanted to put this barn here on purpose because I love the idea of a renovated barn. So in the storyline, obviously the original barn is this like functional nectar making cellar. And then it gets abandoned. Somebody dies in there apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and we see that in the broken version of the house. And then in the future, when somebody buys it and renovates it, they convert the barn into like a guest house in the back of the lot. I feel like you see this kind of thing all the time on like HGTV with these converted barn homes. And so in the modern renovation that I'll post next week, I had it like converted into grandma's house. So the main house has the family. And then we got this like converted granny suite in the back for her to live in. And that's just what's so fun for me about this little build series because I love in 
envisioning what goes on throughout the course of this house's life. It's just fun for me to think about different ways that places could be used over the years. But now we are putting some finishing touches on the outside of the build. I had to wait until the very end to do the landscaping because I had to like give myself time to emotionally recover from deleting all the original <laughs> landscaping. And I wanted the landscaping here to follow a very similar path to what the abandoned house landscaping looked like. Because in my mind, the abandoned house has the same landscaping. It's just overgrown over like many, many years of being abandoned. So we want to have plants that are similar in style and kind of in the same area, just maybe not dead and less overgrown. And you'll see next week when I post the modern farmhouse renovation, they've completely redone all the landscaping, just ripped all of it out and started from scratch, which makes sense because by that point it would have been dead. But in this case, this is the original that then became overgrown. <laughs> so I put a lot of pretty plants everywhere. I started with some bushes from the horse ranch pack because I was trying to make it blend into the environment a bit better. And then I went in and added some other little flowers and stuff. Sometimes when I do builds like this, I like to layer the landscaping. So I'll start off with like some big bushes. I'll add some lower lying bushes and then fill in with some like medium sized plants. In this case, I picked some little rose bush things from Cottage Living, which I kind of loved the color of. Oh, and one other small detail. So I have a couple trees on this lot and I put them in the same place that the abandoned house has trees, which obviously makes sense because they would be the same trees, but they're smaller trees because I liked the story of like, you know, 50 years later, the tree is still there, but it's quite big and bushy. It's, you know, kind of ragged looking because it's not been taken care of for a long time. This kind of thing is just so fun for me. The little like detail and imagination that goes into building something like this. So I'm sorry if you don't care. I care. I have a lot of fun with it. Kind of similar in the back, we have that farmland, which you might remember from the original abandoned. Kind of similar in the back, we have that farmland, which you might remember from the abandoned version. In that abandoned version, we had like big fields of crops and dead vines all in the middle, plus this random broken tractor. <laughs> I don't really know if you need a tractor in a farm that small, but whatever. What do I know about farming? I, I don't. I'm a simmer for a living. But anyway, this is obviously the original version, so it doesn't have any dead crops, but I did fill it in with a bunch of pretty like living plants. <laughs> so I put like lavender fields out in the back, which I'll show you in the tour of the house. In general, the landscaping took me a long time. I actually cut out about half of it, like the second half, because a lot of it is the same thing over and over again. It was just me putting bushes everywhere and then putting those same bushes somewhere else and then doing that again. <laughs> and so I'm going to finish the build here and I want to pop into the game for real now and show you a quick tour of everything. To start though, I want to show you the abandoned farmhouse just to remind you what it looked like. So here we have what the house looked like after many years of being vacant, people throwing parties, people using it to dump their trash. We've got that same pathway. It's just starting to get sort of overgrown and obviously it's full of trash. Here in the barn, we've got those holes in the floor. It's full of garbage. There is no evidence that horses used to live here. In the basement, we've got some things covering up the cracks. In the basement, we've got some exposed beams in the ceiling where there's holes. We've got some storage happening. There's a dead guy. Out here, you can see those fields I was talking about. And then you actually come up into the house. It's boarded up. They're telling you not to go in there. The porch is completely destroyed. You come inside. We have like some mail piled up, muddy paw prints, stains in the floor. It's dark. There's mold in the walls everywhere. There's kind of some destroyed furniture and destroyed rugs. The kitchen is totally broken down. We've got like this broken stove. The bathroom's a mess. Down here, we've got a little hallway that takes you into the office and the dining room. Upstairs, another hallway. <laughs> we have this bedroom. We've got the kids' room, a baby's room, and the primary bedroom. And that is the entire original house, or I guess it's, I mean, is it the original house? When you think about it, this is the original house what we just finished building. So here we have the pre-disaster version. You can see the original fence is back up. It's not broken anymore. We've got these beautiful fields of flowers in the back. I pretend that they grow flowers back here. I don't know. I thought it was cute. This is the original version of the barn back when a horse would have lived in here. The basement no longer has anybody dead, <laughs> or I guess doesn't have anybody dead yet. The kids had a swing set back here. The porch is huge and beautiful and functional. In that destroyed version, I had these flower boxes with some dead plants in them in the exact same place. I didn't move them at all, but I put some living plants here. Oh no, there was a, there was a stain in the wall. 
Um, that's okay. It's an old house. It was always an old house. It was that was you know the beginning of the end for it <laughs> Anyway, I have these flowers here. We've got a chess table There's a flower arranging table because I'm picturing that these sims grow flowers So I like the idea of that and then you come inside we have a lot of that same furniture So we've got this really nice little coat rack We still have the same table and mirror just you know It's not broken anymore and there's there's actually cute decor on it when you come through that door We've got this lovely living room with some built-in bookshelves. It's all very cozy I love the look of this couch with that wallpaper because I like how it matches the flowers down here We have the kitchen completely repaired or completely unbroken <laughs> We didn't repair it. We rewinded it here. We have the kitchen completely rewinded They have one bathroom in here kind of cute with some little clutter and stuff down this hallway We have the staircase and a door into the office and into the dining room in the other build I use these same pictures, but in broken swatches So in this version I have them in the same place just not broken Here's that little office with some cute Cute clutter in it and then here is that dining room which I am obsessed with the color scheme of upstairs we have a very nice clean little hallway the other build I used this color of the rug which I thought was kind of funny to change because you could hypothetically imagine that it's the same rug but this one is just really dirty <laughs> like the gray has faded to yellow and it is disgustingly dirty now so I swapped it to gray and pretended that it was the same as before just clean here we have that primary bedroom same wallpaper just the other version had that like mattress up against the wall from the basement kit. This is what I imagine it would have looked like. And then we have a nursery down here, kind of cutely decorated with some kids stuff. As a little ode to the other build, I had a couple of these creepy dolls around and I put one in the shelf. This is that kid's room. I love this room, I think. I kind of made a fake desk. It's not really functional. You can't even sit there, but I put it here as if the Sim was writing in a diary. This room has a real desk, but it is, you know, cluttered up so you can't really use it. But that, my friends, is the end of the build. So I hope that you enjoyed it. Like I said, I'm gonna make one more video where I renovate this house again, just starting from the disgusting version <laughs> because the timeline goes this, then destroyed, then renovated. It'll be fun too, because in that modern version, we can adjust the floor plan a little bit. Like maybe those Sims will wanna take down a wall in the kitchen. Maybe they'll wanna add an extra bathroom in. So we can try and pretend and do stuff like that in that version. So stay tuned for that video next week and I will link that abandoned version down below in case you wanna go watch it. And on that note, I think I have talked enough. So I'm just gonna end this video right here. Thank you for watching and I will see you all tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. How many of you were around in the fixer upper days? Specifically, if I ever renovated one of your builds, can you tell me in the comments? Because I would love to hear about it. I miss those times. <laughs>